Hey, Antonyami here, and we have a really awesome video called Antonyami Rewind the Timeline. So we're going to talk about where Antonyami has started from when I was born all the way to where I am now. So we're going to probably do like dive into a lot of things from my development, my choices, my actions, what major things happened in my life. And we'll go down the road from there. I hope you guys sit back, enjoy it. It's going to be a wild ride, and this is all going to be coming from the heart, guys. So I'm using the, I 90% don't script my things or whatever, but this is all coming from Antiami's heart, and you guys have a lot of snippets of where I came from. So that's the whole point of this video, and that's what the goal is to see if you can know me in a deeper in a deeper sense from how I am now compared to how I used to be and how I developed myself through those trials and tribulations. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, for those who don't know, my real name is Craig Washington. I'm not going to reveal my middle name because I don't think it's that relevant. Um, obviously, my dad is named Craig as well, so I am a junior. So you guys can refer me to as CJ which is Craig Jr., for those who don't understand that. Well, I was born here in NC, which is North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, 1991 is the year I was born. My birthday is July 26th. Been um, a Leo since day of birth, obviously, because that's what month I'm born in and the day. So shout out to Leos for people who are also Leos. Or birthdays in July. I still represent you guys as well. Everybody else, pretty low tier. So, um, yeah, happy family of four. Me, my sister, my mom, and dad. That's basically, you know, how that formed up. My mom and dad. It's been pretty much happy until like when I turned nine years old. But we're gonna get into that later on. Um, I'm two years apart from my sister. She was born in 1993. I'm born in 1991. So I'm the older brother. And she looks up to me for a lot of cool things as well. As I look down on her for a lot of things of correction. Um, obviously, I was born in 1991 here in Charlotte. And we started off in a hotel, not a hotel, but an apartment. And we used to live... Right around the corner from my grandma's house, like literally walking distance, you can probably walk, take about five to seven minutes to get to my grandparents' house on my dad's side. So that's where we started. We started in an apartment. Um, I was too young to remember any of this, so I don't quite remember what the apartment looked like. I just remember that it had stairs. Well, I figured out that I am have a weird tolerance to milk. Now, I'm not like lactose intolerant by any means. But for some reason, when I drink milk, uh, I tend to upchuck. So for some reason, that didn't agree with me. So I don't know what that was about. But I can eat ice cream. I can eat dairy, things like that. But when it came to milk, I just never and I, I just never liked it. Even as a kid, like I was just with the store back up. So that was very interesting. I remember when um when I was younger, I used to be super hyperactive. So um, my dad actually suggested for me to be on Ritalin. Um, thank God my mom rejected that because um, we'll get more later down to that story. But when I was around 15 years old, something drastically happened to one of my friends that had the same issue as I was super high, like hyper just being kids. And um, we'll talk about that later on once we get down to the down the road. So as a baby, nothing too much. Just know I was hyperactive. I like adventures. I love making noises. Um, I was really, really, um, how can you say, like, interesting. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. I was just really cute. <laughs> like, you know how a lot of kids are. We like tear things up, move to the next room, tear it up again. I was destructive. Um, but it's all part about being, being nosy and being adventurous because I wanted to know new things. You know, I want to see how things work. I like shiny stuff. I like colors, you know, so we just did with that. Um, as I grew up into preschool, I uh, fast forward five years from now. We went to preschool. My preschool was Lollipop Daycare, which was 
honestly like one of the best places on the place of the earth at this point in time. Like this is amazing. Like get snack time. Um, the teacher was really awesome. Everything w- what you wanted for as a kid for pl- having fun and playing and things like that was all there in that in that place. So it was really cool. Um, another thing was that my mom thought I, I was one of those kids that were gonna be like super attached to like not being around other like kids because you know I was really close to my parents when I was you know younger. So um, you know she just thought that I was not gonna handle it well. Psych! I actually <laughs> you know as soon as she sat me down, I saw all the kids and stuff. I just de- I, I dipped out. I was like, see ya, mom. See ya. Um, uh, went and played with the toys. I was like, I waited by. I remember that, and I went out and played with the kids and just have fun, you know. Yolo. Um, my sister wasn't like that at all. My sister's complete opposite. I think she cried <laughs> when my mom left, and she was antisocial. So we're kind of complete opposites. Me and my sister are like literally opposites. So it's kind of interesting how that foretells. I know after school because my mom, my grandma actually quit her job after I was born to take care of us, so my mom and dad can work. Things like that. So we will always go back to my grandma's house. I think my grandma would be the one to pick us up. And uh, we'll go to, to the park and things like that. And have fun. Like, we had a great time. My grandma took really good care of us. Cooked a lot. Was, um, Then let's fast forward to elementary school where things got a little bit different. So my mom recently told me this, that um, the reason why I have a speech problem now. And, um, I mean, I'm still working with him. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm speaking really clearly now. Um, then, then this never always been the case. So, for example, um, the first four years of elementary school, I had a speech problem. So, for example, like I would talk to you and I would literally have no periods in between sentences. I would mispronounce every single word in between then. It will confuse you. I wouldn't know. I, I wasn't subjectively had a like I didn't have I would tell you four things in one sentence like it was crazy like I went to the basketball court um color um ate this this you know I would just be all over the place it would just be ongoing like sentences it was like at you and then imagine saying all that or injecting all that and then I would mispronounce everything so I wouldn't say yellow I would be like yellow and rattling that must be wrestling wrestling you know, like it was, it was scary. So, um, the first couple of years in elementary school, I had to go to a speech class to actually slow down. Again, I guess being hyper, had to slow down and actually re- relearn the English language. It was very interesting um, because I had to pacify my mouth because I couldn't. I never said words when I was little. I just always did things. Always did things. Never said anything. So. That's kind of how that habit developed, and um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't really good for me at all. So. You know, shout outs to that. But um look at me now. So yeah. So elementary school, I remember um being really weak in English, really strong in math. So I was really good with numbers. I hate reading. Reading was like not my thing. Um reason being is because I'm I have a little bit of touch of um dex uh, di- dyslex I'll say that my language right there again. I know the word, but you guys know what I mean. Like when you switch words around, when you read something and it is like words kinda like jump all over the place. Um I still suffer from that now. Um, obviously, I'm getting better with that. Um, still want to read and get better with that and stuff like that. Some days I, I'm really strong. Some days I'm just like, oh, what the crap? I can't read. Um, we're not speaking that because I can definitely read now. But um, yeah, so that's where I come from with that. I hated that. I know my um, fourth grade language arts teacher was actually lived across the street from my grandparents, like literally across the street. Like I literally today, <laughs> it was funny, I actually visited my grandparents today. I actually saw her walking through her house and that's my fourth grade language arts teacher Simmons so shout outs to that and um what was really cool is in the fourth grade actually my dad made a decision to hold me back one year to relearn English again it was crazy like I still couldn't get the English language it was really difficult to me so my dad held me back for that one year so all my friends with the fifth grade and I was like dad I don't want to stay here like I want to move on it was so like it was so I, I wanted to hurt my dad like it was I was mad, you know? Like, why would you punish me for a whole year? That's not fair. Can I, like, go to the fifth grade and you can, like, tutor me on the side or something? But that's not what the case was. Actually, now I'm really thankful for that because it slowed me down again to, like, all the distractions went ahead of me and I had time to focus on myself and relearn things. So it was really cool. Long story short, it, it helped me out. But in, in the moment, it was, like, the worst thing ever. Also, at this point in time, this is where my mom and dad were seeing eye-eye on a lot of things. 
Like this is where I started to like develop sports and things like that. When I started get to go into the middle school area, so I started playing basketball, football, golf, um, track, tennis. Um, like you can name it. I did everything but baseball. Like it was, in, it was insane. Um, so this is when I was like the sports in Tayami, and um, yeah, this is what the time when me and my dad. Oh, I'm sorry, my mom and dad were getting a divorce. I was like, it starts. I noticed an argument started to happen when I was nine years old. And I actually don't know how old I was when they actually got divorced. It could have been like 10 or 11. I'm not 100% sure. But what's cool is, is that like protective of my sister. Like I wasn't the kind of guy in school that was like going to. How can I say? Wasn't going to let anybody talk about my mom, my sister, or my family, anything like that. My grandparents, like I was really defensive over my family. So when uh, my mom and my dad would argue all the time and in and out of the night and things like that. Um, my sister would be crying because she was like, mommy, daddy's fighting. And I'm like, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. I know everything's going to be okay. Um, my dad continues to push my mom into the door. And that's when I was like, okay, um, I don't think that's still the case now. But so they eventually get a divorce and um, they fought over custody over us for a very long time. And since they couldn't come up with a schedule to actually do things themselves, the, the court um, offered this since my dad is not necessarily a church guy and my dad was more into education and my mom was more like the fun parent as far as like we do activities. So my mom had custody over us on weekends. So it was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Mondays because Mondays, you know, it'll swap because it gives them a fourth day and, and all I give them 15 days a month, 15 days, you know, so my dad had me during the week so we can um also do schoolwork and things like that and stay focused on that. So it was a really okay schedule. It still kind of sucks that you couldn't see your mom until this certain day. Like, I couldn't see my mom on Tuesday because it was against the law. And um, it was it was interesting. It was like, okay, that was crazy. Eventually, my dad got married to um my stepmom, and my mom is still rocking it single. Super cool. Going to middle school, like, I... Eventually, my dad kicked me out of all my sports. So, basically, I went from being really sporty into really nerdy. So, that's when I got into, um, well, I don't want to say poker is nerdy, but I got into poker, more mind games, chess. I got into computers and gaming. So, I, I dived into that a little bit more, and I took that more serious. And also, I developed a, um, a business backbone to be independent because after I turned about like 13, 14, 15, this is the time my dad actually threw me out the house because I guess I was trying to be a man because I disagree with a lot of my dad's viewpoints because I don't think he was, he was really correct on, on a lot of things. So I um, stood up to him and he didn't like that. So get out the house I hadn't seen my dad in six years from 13 to 19. Um, but in between then I was in middle school and high school and I had no male role model in my life to tell me things, you know, so I had that absent in my life. So in middle school, I decided to act out because, you know, I, I felt like my dad didn't love me. Who cares? I mean, my mom loved me. That was cool. But, you know, obviously we didn't have that male, male relationship because my mom's a female. So she was more like, a, she would baby me and stuff. And I'm like, mom, stop baby me. I want to be a guy, blah, 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 things like that. Um, so I, I got, I act out a lot. I act negative in school. Like I got kicked out of classes. I skipped. I did this. I didn't do homework. I almost failed middle school. Almost failed high school. Hung out the wrong crowd. Did things. Um, like I didn't do any drugs, but thank God. But I did everything else next to it. Um, threw rocks at cars and caused recess and to cancel. It was just crazy. Like I just did stupid stuff and I just did it for an act of attention because I felt like I wasn't loved where I was at or wasn't getting what I wanted. and that led into that so it was really interesting but in between there i got into chess obviously um I, I gambled um so obviously like i used i got really good like i was really competitive thanks to the sports inside of me i got really good at things that i felt like if i was was going to do something i'm gonna get good at it so uh, when it got to poker I, I actually made enough money to actually get in college without any debt which is cool and then chess third place in 48 states when i was 17 years old in chess so that was really awesome with that. Um, also, going back to middle school, let's um, backtrack a little bit. Actually, I got my first crush when um, I was, I want to say 14 or 15 years old. It was this girl named Linda. Um, oh, my gosh, I loved her. We met on the bus. We talked on the bus. And um, turned out she was actually in my homeroom class. So I, I sat there and chit-chatted with her. She was half white, 
half Vietnamese. Um, the reason why I really liked her because I, I she was really pretty. I like for some reason I like pale girls. I don't know why I like pale girls. I don't like not saying that dark skin girls are yucky or anything like that, but that's just my preference. So she came to school every day and she had this beautiful rolls in her head. Like, I don't know if it was artificial or whatever, but she was, you know, I thought was her Vietnamese coming out. Like she was pretty. Like I was, I just thought that was cool. And, um, uh, it, it blew my mind that she actually knew what video games was. Cause I, I didn't think girls play video games. Like back then girls just did yucky stuff like kiss boys and hug and cooties and all that stuff. You know, it's back in that area area or whatever. So it was just really interesting to see that. So I was like, okay, cool. But when she fig- I figured out she played video games, I was like, I'm in love. You know, cool. But long story short with her was that she disappeared mid through the year. So I was like, I don't know where she went. And yeah, so I was left lonely <laughs> with that. So anyway, so high school actually still acting out, um, getting a little bit better. But actually, I, I go into my first real relationship with a girl and um that taught me a lot about relationships and things like that and i actually went to prom with her my 12th grade year had for a great time you know so it was was really cool she was actually from germany and yeah she was really cool we were together for about like a year and um things didn't work out because we were both immature so that was the thing and learned a lot from that that happened in high school i guess i hit on this real quick that actually almost blew up the school and due to my actions actually set a fire inside of my chemistry class or lab and there was gases going on and stuff so if fire gas gas get the drift uh could have blew up and it caused a fire alarm and i got suspended for 30 days you know so a lot of makeup days for that so it was really awesome for that as well so that was cool anyway going to college um you know i got a taste of actually let me backtrack again um, after I graduated from high school, um, everybody came to support me. You know, I finally graduated. I was like, yeah, yeah, I barely made it, but we got there though. You know, like CD on a roll, let's go. But anyway, um, we got to the graduation ceremony and obviously both my side of the family, since my mom and dad were divorced, obviously they were feuding. My mom's side and dad's side were feuding, like both the grandparents and things like that. So the cool thing was they all came together for one purpose to see me graduate. They both still love me. Both sides still love me. Um, so I did this little trick where, um, I invited one side of the family to a restaurant and I invited the other side of the family to the restaurant. I put them both in the same environment and this could have got rocky, but I decided to put them together and their focus was about me graduating and giving me gifts and things like that. So hopefully they got distracted by the fact that they were mad at each other about stuff that happened in the past. They can get over it and celebrate my day, which in sense worked and, um, it got the family back together slightly. But it was a good fix because they got my mom and dad back on talking bases and it fixed a lot of the dumb issues that they were going through. So shout out to that. And that's how we got the family started to get back together. And I reconnected with my dad then, 19 years old. So, um, yeah. Anyway, college life, you know, freedom. I got into the Yu-Gi-Oh scene when I was 19. Um, been in the Yu-Gi-Oh scene for about, I'll say about three years. Um, um, eventually the game got stupid and I quit. So, um, got my stuff stolen. It cost me $1,200 and stuff like that. Like I invested probably like three or $4,000 into the game. Bad, but, um, yeah, that's what happened. And, um, you know, college was cool. I, I picked up the game called Smash. So I started a game. I started playing Smash when I was 20 years old. 20, 21, I want to say 20. And I got into the competitive scene in that, um, I was a really good brawl player. Um, my first year in Brawl, competitively, I was, like, terrible. Like, I would get last place every single time. Eventually, I got better. I'm not going to go into the whole story in that because there's actually a YouTube video about that. So, you guys can check that out. Um, so, we're not going to talk about the Smash community like that. Um, but I met some really awesome, cool people like Scotty and Esam and Mechos and people like that, you know. And they got me onto that video game track that was like, let's drop you a let's go into video games. Um, eventually I created a Twitch account, um, didn't plan on streaming ever. I just want to create a Twitch account just because I just wanted one. So I created one when I was like 22, but I didn't start streaming until I was like 24. So it was really cool how that formed up and stuff like that. And I want to digress and I want to talk about the Yam fam. So if anybody actually stayed here this long, and I know this is like a snapshot of a lot of things that happened in my life. And there's a lot more things that could, that happened, but this is a, like the, some of the points I want to point out. 
But um, ever since I started streaming, it, it's been a, a beautiful life. Um, obviously, I started my own business at the time. So I was like, I started my own business when I was 20, 22 years old. So I've been in my own business for three years. I work Now I'm working in a regular job as well on top of doing a streaming thing. So it's really cool how all this all came together from a kid that was just like, I would basically talk trash in your face, disrespect you, all these different things to the guy I am now because the influences and stuff of my business and investing in myself to slow down, read books, understand things, get mentality from really wealthy people and convert that to a stream to where people can now follow my lead and trust me and things like that. So it's really cool. So I want to make a really quick shout out to um, the Yam fam. For anybody that's actually stood here and watched this whole video, I know this is really long. I ain't want it to be this long, but it is. So, um, and I get the message over there. It's awesome. So, uh, I love the Yam fam. I'll do anything for you guys. If you guys want anything from me, just let me know. Uh, I'm down to talk about anything and help you guys through any situations that you guys are going through because I've been through a lot um, and I didn't cover it as. as I, I probably I cover like ten percent of my life in this video. This is really crazy. Um, so if you guys have anything, to, anybody to talk to, man, I got you guys back, and I'm here for you guys, and I'm full power at Yam Fam for you guys. And I said money doesn't really matter to me. I like impacting people, and I like changing people's lives, and making people better every day, and seeing people grow and untap their potential, so you guys can do great things in the future in the world. If it is becoming a streamer or is it if you're becoming a chemist or if it's coming an electrical engineer or something like that, you know, I want you guys to go out and do it because you guys are worth it. You guys are valuable. And I want to make sure that you guys know that because it doesn't matter if I think you guys are worth it. Um, if you guys don't believe it's worth it, then my word is void. You know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to prosper in that. And, um, you know, don't let video games be the whole entity of your life. I like, don't just sit around and just play video games all day. But you know, make your life prosperous, you know what I'm saying, like, have your goals, have long-term goals, have short-term goals, what are you guys going to do to get them, make a roadmap, make sure you guys write your goals down and stuff, write it down on paper, keep it in front of you, yeah, I got a refrigerator full of goals and stuff I want to accomplish, things like that, and I'm not done, so I want to keep continuing pressing and stuff, so, all right, guys, with that said, um, I'm wrapping up this video, and um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it, um, I just kind of wanted to get this off my chest. It was a really cool video, and I just thought about doing it because I just wanted to. And sorry, like I said, it's very long. But um, all right, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And Antonyami is 